Hey everyone, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. So if you look on the screen here, you'll see that I'm running a Mac application that has Windows inside of it. So this is what's called a virtual machine, and I'm going to show you how to set this up. It's, it's easy, it takes just a few minutes, it's free, uh, but it's a great way to access Windows programs that you can't get on your Mac in case you need to do one specific thing. So without any further delay, let's get into it and I'll show you how this works. Okay, so to start, there's going to be a guide that I have linked below, and it'll have a link to this VirtualBox uh, program. So you'll want to download this app first. Just click on it, and it'll say uh, OS X Hosts, so that's what you want to use. So you want to open it up. Okay, and so this is going to be the installer application. You're going to click on the yellow one on the top left here. Uh, just double click on it, go through the prompts. Uh, I'll tell you right now, if you're running one of the uh, more modern versions of OS X or Mac OS, including like High Sierra or Catalina, it's just going to fail initially when you first do it. And that's fine. You're going to run through it. And then you'll see right here at the end, it'll say that the installation failed because of security issues. So you'll need to go into your security preferences, open that up. Okay, and in here, you just want to hit allow, and that's going to allow Oracle to install it the next time around. So you go back to that, close out the installation thing, make sure you don't move to the trash, you, you hit the keep button instead, and then you run that install all over again. And it's tedious, it takes a second, uh, but it'll work uh, much more quickly the second time around. There we go, so successful installation. Now we need to go back to that uh, VirtualBox website, and there's one more application that we need to download. So you can see here it says VirtualBox Extension Pack. So go ahead and download that, and then you're going to click on it, and it'll come up with this uh, screen. And this is actually what VirtualBox looks like. Go through the, uh, you know, approve all of the things here, and then you're basically now going to add the Windows machine to VirtualBox. You're telling VirtualBox what machine to run. So go to Microsoft's website, which I also have linked in the guide below. You're going to pick the, the most recent one, which is the Microsoft Edge for Windows 10. And then you're going to make sure it's specific for VirtualBox. And then you're going to hit download. Now this is a long download. It takes uh, takes a while. It's about seven gigs. So you know, go go get a cup of coffee or do whatever it is you need to do. Come back to it and then open it up. You're going to have to extract it because it's a zip file. So you're going to unzip it. And then once it's unzipped, you'll see there's a folder and go into there and you'll see there's two files you need there. And one is the OVF file. That's the most important one. Okay, so go back to. Uh, virtual box and in here you're going to import an uh, application which in this case is going to be Windows 10. So you hit that uh, folder button, you go back to that OVF file that we found earlier, open it up, you're going to hit continue, it's going to show you a bunch of different options and basically explaining what it is you're installing, go ahead and hit that import button and then this will take a couple minutes too. Uh, but just, you know, be patient and let it run its course. And there you are. So now you have Windows 10 hooked up onto your virtual box. So let's go through some of these settings because there's a few things you want to do just to make sure everything's working right. So first off, you need to adjust your video memory. So go through here and just drag this slider bar somewhere in the green. You know, for me, it was about 100 megabytes was like in the middle of the green. So I just stuck with 100 megabytes there. And that's all you need to do for this one. That one's pretty easy. And then you want to enable your USB port. So you go in here, you hit the USB tab, uh, you, you enable USB 2.0. And then if you want, you can plug in your device like an RG350. And then you can actually select it right there. And that'll allow you to recognize the RG350 when you plug it into your Mac, which is actually running Windows. Finally, you want to make a shared folder so you can share folders between the two machines. So it'll be on your Mac as well as in this Windows. So you can make it wherever you want it to be. I'm putting mine in my Documents folder, and I'm just naming it here, this shared folder. So you, you make a new folder, you, you put it here, put whatever name you want, and then just open it up. Now what will happen is that it'll create a folder on your Mac that you can then access from the Windows. And that's it. So let's start it up and see how it works. And look at that, it's a Windows logo. Probably something you didn't expect to run on any Mac, but yep, here it is. So because this is a developer version of Windows, it'll actually come with a username and password. So the username is IE user, your password is password capital P with a zero for the O and then an exclamation point. 
and that's it. Open it up, install Chrome, do whatever it is you want to do, and uh, you're ready to go. So let me show you real quick where the shared folder is. Uh, so if you go in here under networks and then you pick on this folder here, you can see that is your actual shared folder. So you can copy it, put it onto your desktop, create a shortcut there, and that'll allow you to access it pretty easily. So if you want to uh, send files back and forth. I should mention that this entire virtual machine is limited to 40 gigs of space altogether. And about 17 of those gigs is already taken up by the operating system. So this is not a solution for very big files, but it is for smaller files. If you want to move things back and forth, uh, this is a perfect opportunity to do that. And when you shut down the system, you actually just shut it down the way you would shut down any other Windows computer. Go into the taskbar, hit the power button, and then hit shut down. Well, that's it for this video. I hope this was helpful for you. And you know, I just wanted to make a real quick way that you can show how to access Windows applications on a Mac. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and uh, we'll see you next time. Happy gaming.